Good morning everybody and welcome to our Facebook Live this morning. It is Monday the 19th of July 2021. My name's Jenny McCormack and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator and I'm based in Brackley which is in Northamptonshire in the UK. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. If you're joining me live, do say hi and let me know that you're here. You can watch this on Catch Up, either through my Facebook page, or you can also watch it on YouTube as I upload my Facebook Lives um, after they finish straight to YouTube. So if you're watching on Catch Up, hi and welcome to you. If you have any queries or questions, either live or on Catch Up, do pop them in the comments section. Morning Carol and morning Vanessa. Um, do pop them in the, com in the comments section and then if it requires an answer or a response, then I will come back to you. Um, I do monitor that on a regular basis. Occasionally they slip through the net, but I do try and watch them on a regular basis. So Vanessa's joining us from Australia. So I'm guessing this is evening time for you on Monday the 19th. And Carol, I know, is joining us from up the road. So let me talk you through what we're going to be doing today. And this is also the card that we'll be making at our coffee and card section um, session um, this afternoon. I have two sessions of those every week and they're informal crafting with a nice cup of coffee or tea or probably today in this weather a cold drink. <laughs> so this is the stamp set that we're going to be using. All of the products I use are from Stampin' Up. It's called Shaded Summer and this is very much my kind of stamp mainly because it's a really nice crisp image does all the work for you and it has some really nice sentiments that have a mixture of capitals and lower letters with a nice slightly scripted font so the sentiments that you can see there one of my favorite ones is this one here some friendships are just meant to be but we have, as you can see, happy birthday, a thank you, a hello, love you friend, and then two nice um, above and beyond you go there a lot, and may the good you do come back to you. And then obviously we have the two main floral images and this small little um, sprig here. So let me show you the style of cards that we're going to be making. Um, this is an obvious one, Knight of Navy and White, always a really crisp um, design nice and clear and I've just stamped the larger of the two images I've added my sentiment on there and I put this on one of the die cuts from the scallop contour set and this fits our note cards and envelopes perfectly so you've got this one and then I've cut Knight of Navy behind and then that's on the white note card and then for the envelope I've added the other image here and you could also put that on the inside of your card as well so really nice crisp very simple stamping so literally that is three stamps one two three um, and layered up accordingly the second one I've done here and this has been done using our stamp and write markers and these are the um, rounded pens so these are not the blends pens and these contain the same water-based ink as our ink pads and what I've done is I've taken the stamp and I've used the pens so I've used um, in this case granny apple green on the stalk and gorgeous grape for the flower and then I've stamped that again onto a mm -hmm. scallop contour piece and stamped the envelope as well 
using the same technique. Um, now what I'm going to do today for this one is slightly different in that I'm going to spritz this with some water on the stamp prior to stamping to give it a more watercolour look and in order for the paper to take the watercolour for that particular one I'm going to be using our shimmer white now I don't know if you can see that um, the difference there this is a slightly off white but it has a real pretty shimmer you could also use a watercolour paper if you have watercolour paper so that's going to be the second one that I do so we're going to start off with the um, just straight simple stamping of this image here so let me move these um, I'll just move them out of my way but hopefully still just in your line of sight there so this is the stamp set, it's a red rubber stamp set and I'm going to be using that large image again I'm putting it on a larger block, that is block E I want to say, yep yeah, it's block E you could obviously, if you needed to do um, a series of these, these would make great thank you cards then what I would do is I would set this up on the Stamparatus and um, even if depending on which one I was doing I could still use the Stamparatus and then just stamp and position the note card or the layer and away we go um, I am going to use this one here for the inside so I'll just grab a block for that one now there's nothing to stop you using either of these sort of coming in from the side so I might do a third um, example like that and then um, so I've got to thank you I might do some more um, some friendships because I just think that's such a sweet sentiment without being too <laughs> over the top okay let's find a smaller block for that okay so those are my um, stamps that I'm going to use so for my first one I'm just going to stamp it onto this scallop layer and something that looked really pretty was using soft succulent instead of a really deep rich colour now I think this would also look really nice actually in cherry cobbler you could almost make that into a Christmas card um, so that's another idea but some of the ladies on Friday at Coffin Card use soft succulent and it looked really nice so I did think I might stamp that and then use these lovely genial gems which are slightly glitter gems um, but that matches perfectly and then I've also got soft succulent card these gems actually are in part of our class for this weekend okay so let's give this a go so I've got soft succulent here just going to bring in a little bit of grid paper to stamp on so I can um, just test it out and with the larger stamps I always recommend taking the ink pad to the stamp and I do also recommend this if you have um, you know dexterity issues or if you have a tendency to over ink now I can see this is very inky so I'm just going to pop it onto here and have a look see yes so it's really inky and it's slightly bubbled up so what I'm actually going to do and I think this is the heat that's causing this so um, because we do have unusually warm weather so just dry that off so all I'm going to do is take my ink pad and um, take a bone folder but you can also do this with a um, an acrylic block exactly the same thing and I'm just going to move some of the ink away from the edge there like so
and then I'm going to use this element of the ink pad now I think it is because this wasn't happening on Friday so I think it is just that it is unusually warm oh well done then oh my goodness I'm impressed because I know you've got a busy day today okay so I'm going to use this part of my ink pad and I can see already that that is much better So this is where just stamping it off onto a little bit of scrap paper obviously our grid paper is perfect because it can um, cover your work surface as well that's better I'm happier with that let me just wipe that down okay so thank you Lynn for joining us on your busy day today so this is shaded summer that we're using so just going to ink this up again checking that i've got it covered and you can angle this whichever way you like depending on how much space you need for your sentiment so you could put this angled over like that so you've got more space here you could put it centrally just for a small sentiment or to leave it without a sentiment and you can also do it at an angle like that so it's quite um, versatile I'm going to do this one at a different angle just for a change like so So this is soft succulent there we go and we describe this as a um, what do we call it like a sagey type green it's a really nice well soft succulent well named <laughs> okay so this is the um, sentiment I'm going to use some friendships are just meant to be okay take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to put this It's one of those sorry I know that's in a bit of shade for you isn't it oh it's a slightly wonky but it's fine I'll cope with that so some friendships are just meant to be and then this is going to get layered onto a soft succulent layer like so and then onto my white card and I've got these genial gems so they're two colors so there's like a gold shimmer and then this lovely um, soft succulent um, style green and it's got some um, a bit of what's the word a bit of sparkle to it that's it right let me wash my thing down it is a lovely sentiment isn't it Lynn? there's a few quite a few people i could uh, apply that to there we go so that is going to go onto our card so what i'm going to do is layer that up but on the inside of the card i'm going to stamp the other image so let me just that down you see my bone fold is rather <laughs> well used okay so this is my card here so I'm going to ink up this image here and put this in the center 
and this idea came from one of the ladies it was Doreen at coffee and card on Friday and uh, she was the one who came up with the idea of stamping that on the inside which I thought was absolutely inspired so thanks to Doreen although she's not online unfortunately but I will tell her I acknowledged her <laughs> as I shall see her this week so just going to pop that in the middle there we go and then just going to fold this over and pop these layers on the front so you can use any glue of preference so this is my stamp and seal you don't need a lot of this it's very strong or you could use wet glue or tear and tape whatever your preference is so I'm just centering that on there and I know that this um, piece will fit our note card perfectly so this piece is three and a quarter inches by four and three quarters and the note card finish size is three and a half by five. There we go. So let's pop that on there and then add some gems to that. And then I'm going to show you using our marker pens and our spritzer to get a watercolour effect and a two two colour effect okay so there's our inside there's our note card let's just add that and then let's pop some of these really pretty gems on I can find my way in so as I say these feature in our class in a box this month and our card classes so we've got large ones and small ones so I think I'm just going to dot these three of these I think the gold would look nice as well but I'm going for a straight monochrome look here with the soft succulent there we go and of course we do need to thank you Kerry um, we do need to add an image to our envelope of course this would make a lovely set you could use um, each of the sentiments actually so I think you, you could do a, a thank you a hello friendship birthday love you five six seven so you could do each one of those as a set and pop them in a little box and I think that'd be a really lovely gift for somebody so let's just use this small image for the envelope so that ink has settled down now I've sort of moved it around So I'm just going to have this one on the front coming off the bottom edge. Yes, yeah, so it would be um, lovely. I, I really do think in Cherry Cobbler or maybe Merry Merlot, you could make this into um, like a Christmas card. Thank you, Vanessa. Let's just add this one in here. So simple. So that's my um, back of the envelope. That's the front. And there's our card. So just monochrome, just really effective. Okay, so let's do some stamping using our stamp and write markers to get this. Um, two tone I'm just going to turn this over so what I'm going to use for that because I'm going to do watercolored 
as well. I'm going to use a um, piece of shimmer, shimmer white. In fact, what I think I might do is, um, let me just find... could find a spare piece of card to do one with watercolour and one without but of course they all just disappeared hey ho right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the equivalent of this and then I'm going to use a spray with our spritz it's just got water in it to soften the look now, some of the ladies on Friday didn't like the fact that they didn't have control. Because when you're spritzing, it's a case of, you know, it's where the water goes, isn't it? Um, so these are Stamp and Write markers. And normally I have them in my case, but I've just ordered recently a, um, a replenishment set. So I'm, um, I need to mark these up as being the new ones which is why they're um, separated in the minute. Um, so let's see, I could do... I've got Magenta Manus, would be nice striking um, pink. And then I might do Granny Apple Green. So it'd be, it's the same as this green here. move this out of the way slightly so what I'm going to do is bring my stamp back now this is perfect for people who don't like inking up larger stamps and they like to do um, you know more detailed versions so what I'm going to do is use the pink on the flowers and I can use this as a guide one two three and the little bud and then granny apple green for the rest you could do these little buds I guess in the color um, but I'm just going to do those in green. So I've got Magenta Madness here. And it doesn't really matter which order you do them in. So you're using the brush end, which you can tell by the thick line. And also the little um, diagram here shows you the brush end as opposed to the fine end here. And using the side of the brush on the stamp and you can obviously see clearly where that color is going it's a bit more tricky if you have a very light color or a color that matches the color of the base stamp okay so I'm just going to do these three here and the bud So this does take a little bit longer, but hopefully you will like the um, result. And you use this as well, this technique you can use for omitting parts of a stamp. So if you didn't want this um, set of leaves, for example, then or you, you had a smaller area to cover, you could just colour in this part, leaving the top part out. So this is Granny Apple Green. And you can see the colour of that being brushed on. And I would normally recommend use the light colour first and then the darker colour so that you're not picking up the darker colour with the light pen because obviously there are areas where you get a little bit close okay now if you didn't want a watercolor look you could just stamp this as is and then what i would recommend you do because obviously a little bit of that pink has dried is to breathe on it like so and then what happens is the moisture in your breath um, will moisten that and make it um, give it a better uh, better coverage and I put the spritzer down and I can't see it here it is okay so I'm going to use my stamping spritz and what I'm not going to do is spritz really close to the stamp 
because what happens is you get a much more direct force onto the stamp. So what I'm going to do away from the camera is spritz at an angle and then, um, so if this was the stamp here, I'm going to sort of press the, the button to spritz and then just move my um, stamp underneath so the falling um, water falls onto the stamp rather than spraying directly onto it, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and then I'm going to stamp that straight onto here. So, excuse me while I do that slightly off camera. Okay, so that has got more water on it. And if you can see, and then I'm just going to stamp that straight down like so. Hi Babsy. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you had a nice weekend. Okay. And there we go. So it's not massively watercolored. There's a little bit here. So you can if you wish, I'm just doing this slightly off camera, add a little bit more water to make it to make it move a little bit more. Oh good, 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 good. And the other thing you can do if there's still not enough uh, movement is you can use a water painter, water brush, and just move a little bit of that colour around. Let's just get rid of that. And then you can do the same with the green if you want to do a little bit of infill. Obviously on the original one these are open leaves but you can just drag in a little bit of that colour like so and you just get a softer effect rather than and if you can see that's quite crisp be more obvious against this one much softer and also that's a different angle so it does make it look slightly different and then you can blend some of this across now you will need to use either watercolor paper or shimmer white paper because it needs to be able to absorb some of the water like so so it gives it quite a different look to this one Obviously, this is single colour anyway. Okay, like so. And so you can keep adding that um, if you wish. You could um, spritz it again and do another imprint. It'll be lighter, obviously. Um, so that is a different look. Now, I'm just, I want to wait for that to um, dry before I um, stamp my sentiment. So let me just see what layers I could put here with it. So I probably almost certainly got a granny apple green in here. And I have a magenta madness. Look at those colours, so rich. Oh, so nice. Okay, so I can either do this or this or I could cut these in half and have half and half quite tempted to give that a go should we see what that looks like while that's drying let's move that out of the way Bring this in. Mm. 
so this is 8.3 well no it's three and a quarter so it needs to be one and a half and an eighth let's have a look see calculated that right that doesn't look the same give or take let's have a look and see whether that works just for something slightly different there we go what do we think Just brings both of those in together, doesn't it? So I'm just looking at the width of those. So I'm going to go for that. So here's my notes card. Let me see if that will fit on the way that I've cut those panels. Thank you, Vanessa. Yep, that will work. Okay, so while that is drying, and I'm still going to add a sentiment to that, um, the way that I put these together when I'm placing layers onto a card like this is I don't try and put one on first and then the other because if you center this as you think you've got it, very often what can happen is that you haven't got enough space for the other one. So what I like to do is turn them over, not that it really matters for this, <laughs> they're the same, but if you're using um, uh, papers, for example, and then just apply a bit of um, sellotape or tape to the back. So line these up first so they're really um, tight together. And then just put the tape on like that and then it becomes one piece which is then a lot easier to centralize so let me just see which way around I'm gonna have this that looks quite nicely balanced let's turn it around that way oh yes I could cut into quarters yes that's very true yes and have Mm, that's a good idea so which way around I like both actually hi Zanna let's have a look and see I quite like that because there's more green on this side and it's balanced here but I don't think there's a lot to call between it, is there? Green on the left. <laughs> Carol says the first way. Woo! I don't know which one I had. Let's have a look, see. So green, the options are green on the left or green on the right. I don't, I really don't think it makes a huge difference. Kerry's going green on the left. <laughs> so let's add a sentiment to that. Yeah, it's a really inexpensive way of getting two layers rather than do one layer of green and one layer of pink. And obviously you can have these at a you know if you had enough space you could do them at a jaunty angle as well um, let's change sentiment for this one so this is what we're doing at coffee and card i don't know if you you can join us this afternoon babsy i've got a thank you might just do a happy birthday green on the right <laughs> yes perfect for scraps mm, it's a bit tight for happy birthday isn't it Maybe hello you. 
will do. Just take this one off. So I suppose in keeping with this, I need to do hello in one colour and you in the other. And then the whole thing will be two-tone, won't it? So just want to make sure I've got this straight. I might have almost start rather wonky. So what I want to do is just turn this block over. Yeah, that looks straight to me. So let's see. Let's do the pink for the hello. And then the green. Now I'm not going to watercolour this because I don't want all the words to sort of blend out. So I'm just going to try it on here, keeping my block straight to the grid line. There we go. Hello, you. So let's do that. Oh, that's okay, Babsy. <laughs> Ah, a lot of dissension here. Green on the left, green on the right, pink on the left. Decisions, decisions. Right, so. This is my hello. I am sorry, Babsy, I'd forgotten that you were on a roll to the hospital. I hope everything goes well for Pete. Oh, that's very true. I could quarter it. Ooh. Or you could even do it uneven, couldn't you, as well? Right. go so should I quarter it so that you've got all four or is that too much for a small card that's the only thing I'm thinking is it's quite a small card <laughs> oh dear I think I'm going to go with it like that. That's the plan. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pop this, um, I'll put these two layers together. Just make sure that's nice and dry before I turn that over. you're right great idea though <laughs> I think on a bigger card it would be quite stunning but because we've only got a small bit showing I've gone for that pink on the left to balance the pink on the right there and then that's going to go on to our note card so as I say it's really um, I do find it easier to make that back panel into one piece before you try and centralize it okay let's pop that on here there we go now I have got some Magenta Madness um, enamel dots that I could put on. 
but I haven't got any green so um, of the granny apple green so I think I'm going to leave it um, let's just have a look in case I don't think it needs any bling to be honest because it's a small small card let's have a look so I do have magenta madness <laughs> oh yes diagonal would have worked as well absolutely what do you think bow little magenta madness bow would work as well I don't know I think I'm going to leave it <laughs> because I like the fact we've got two tones right the way around <laughs> so there we go <laughs> okay so let me bring back the one that we did earlier so that's this one so we've got the decorated envelope so I'll do the same with this one decorate the envelope up um, but I hope you like our two designs so I say this is watercolored spritzed and then I use a little bit of a water painter to move it around um, and then this one just straight monochrome single color okay so that's it for now thank you so much for joining me today um, Monday and I shall be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. I will probably pop on a bit later to show you the um, cards for this month's class in a box so i have a class in a box and also two in-person classes one in brackley um, here on saturday and one in milton Keynes um, next saturday so i might pop on and run through the ins and outs for my classes now that they're changed and back in person okay so thank you so much for joining me i really do appreciate your time especially on <laughs> Carol says step away from the bling oh bless you oh thanks Vanessa I hope the hints and tips are useful to you so thank you everybody I really do appreciate your time I hope you have a good day afternoon evening and uh, depending on what time you're watching this and I look forward to catching up and crafting with you soon take care look after yourselves look after your loved ones thank you